So we're here with Jan Ozu, the 2008 and now just recently 2010 Washington Post Coach of the Year. Congratulations, you're Thank racking you. up those awards. <laughs> Thank you. Um, also played on Cameroon's Davis Cup team Correct. and the French national team. Correct, juniors, okay, uh, juniors for France. Correct. Okay, and today we're going to be talking about footwork. Jan and I have done a little bit of hitting. The guy knows how to move around the court, so you're going to teach us and everybody at home a little bit about efficient and modern-day movement. Correct. Well, it's what I call modern day okay. footwork, basically. So you, you basically nailed it. Um, the most important part, again, is to uh, take advantage of, you know, your movement when you play tennis. And, you know, for the viewers that are watching this, just imagine having a second for every single shot, a second to spare for every shot that you try to basically execute. And modern tennis allows you to move to the ball and be comfortable, take time away from your opponent and not hurt yourself. If you watch videotapes from the 70s, it's always almost comical how slow they move, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, while we're watching, we're not um, aware of it, you know, but when you compare it to what Nadal and Federer are doing these days, you see how much more explosive the game has become. The game's much faster. Correct. Part of it is the technology. A lot of it is people are becoming better athletes, doing it better, faster, harder. And, um, you know, for your viewers out there, it's very important that they adjust to that, that they understand that, you know, even though they're not professional athletes, that they have the ability as well, you know, to take time away, get to the ball really quickly and efficiently, and uh, really take care of their bodies while doing that, because there is an element of safety. When you move in a very efficient way, you don't hurt yourself. And I'm sure none of us really want to have a hip, you know, sure. replacement by age 40. So. <laughs> You know, that's the most important part. So we're going to be we're going to be learning pro level movement, the same stuff Rafa and Federer are doing. Correct, exactly the same stuff that they're doing. If it works for them, I'm certain that it can work for you. And then my and que me. yeah, my question is, as a rec player, and you sort of addressed this, but I'm I'm sitting at home and I'm wondering, can I do this stuff? Can I move like Rafa? Can I move like Federer? Or do I need to do something different? Well, I cannot guarantee that you will ever, ever be able well, sure. to move <laughs> as fast and as explosively as they can do. Can I use the same footwork patterns? You can certainly use exactly the same okay. footwork patterns and take time away from your opponent and basically enjoy the same qualities that their footwork is giving them. And we talked a little bit about this off camera. Let's talk about it right now. How footwork has become a weapon. Back in the day, players weren't using their feet to take away time as much. Correct. But now it is a big weapon. Correct. They still use the geometry of the court sure. to take time away, but getting to the ball quickly, and you hear it all the time, take the ball early, take the ball early. Well, you know, you can only take the ball early so much, okay? But when you start to move the ball really, really fast and, you know, move efficiently, you can take so much time away. You can also take time away by replacing, which is one of, you know, the main aspects of the game that people never really think about is recovery okay, is the recovery you can always move really fast to the middle while the ball is traveling to your opponent people have the tendency to think that you know taking time away is just going to the ball when in fact taking time away is also when you replace okay. yeah a lot of a lot of rec players will hit and then they'll sort of watch the ball and exactly fix exactly. you know they won't adjust recover their core exactly position. exactly so Final part before we get to the lesson, I get you know, let's talk a little bit about Federer. One of the things that makes him so good is that he's attacking you with his feet. And by that I mean he's moving to the ball, cutting down on your time, and that's why he's such an offensive player. He's got a lot exactly. of tools, but that's one of his tools. Exactly. That's that's perfect. You define it perfectly. He moves to the ball very well. Okay, he's always there on time with even a lot of time to spare. He's taking time away from you, you can't get there. All right. Another part of uh, the Ferrer's game that's never really talked about is how his longevity has allowed him to stay at the top of the game for so long. The guy never gets injured. The reason why he never gets injured is because he's using modern footwork. He moves beautifully, efficiently. He uses all the steps that we're going to go through today and uh, never hurts himself. So again, for all the intermediate players out there, it's very important for them to learn how to move that way so that they can also prevent injuries. Well, Jan, I'm looking forward to it and let's get to the lesson. Great, looking forward to it. Today we're going to be working on a lot of the steps, you know, that are modern to tennis. Nowadays, if you look at uh, most of the professional players now really use extremely efficient footwork, okay? And I think that uh, intermediate players and even beginners can certainly benefit from learning this early on so that they can get better at it, move better, move more efficiently and get to the ball faster. Just imagine having an extra second every single time you move to a ball to hit it. What could you do with it? You know, the options are unlimited, sure, basically. Sure. So um, one of the most commonly used um, 
uh, step is actually the walking step. It's a step that allows you to penetrate the court and actually move in and take advantage and take time away from your opponent. Okay. Okay. Um, in tennis, to me, the most important part is to take time and space away from your opponent. So when you take the ball early, you take time. And because you take time away from them, you have more options. You get, you know, your placement is a little more lethal. And by taking time away, you take even more time. So mm -hmm. the next thing you know, the person is really far away from the ball and they can't get to it. Over the course of a point, you're getting them further and further out of position by taking a fraction of a second every single time you hit exactly. the ball. Exactly. Imagine, you know, getting to the ball with a tenth of a second early every single time mm -hmm. and taking a tenth of a second every time from your opponent, what that's going to do after five or six rallies. You know, the next sure. thing you know, they're totally at the end of the baseline and you have the full court mm -hmm. to put your ball away. And don't have to hit a great shot, just put it in the open don't court. Don't have to hit a great shot. You know, you get a very nice invitation for a winner rather than forcing the winner. And it's, it's worth pointing out that that's how the pros construct points and how they get a lot of winners. They get their opponent off the court and then they have a lot of space to work with and they hit a winner. It's not like they just pull a shot exactly. out of their, you know, out of the, out of the hat exactly. and, and hit a winner. Exactly. One of the most common mistakes that intermediate players do is they try to force their way through a point, you know, by trying to go for a big winner, big shot, big power. When in fact, if you notice how, you know, a point well constructed, you know, takes place is it's usually a lot of movement from side to side, pulling your opponent out, opening up the court. And once you have a wide window, which is really not a risk, you know, you put your ball through mm -hmm. it and then you get your winner without really taking a big risk. All right, so the first one we got is called the walking step, you the said? The walking step, okay. exactly. You know, the walking step is uh, a more penetrating way. People that um, use a, an open stance mm -hmm. might feel like they recognize it because it's a step that you take to the side, but it's more penetrating. So I'm going to have uh, my assistant over there feed me a few balls, okay? This would be an open stance where mm -hmm. I just take a step to the side, okay? okay? The walking step is more penetrating. If you notice, I'm actually walking to my You're shot. stepping forward. I'm stepping okay. forward. One way to look at it is look at the baseline as a reference point, okay? The open stance, okay, I'm going to stay behind the line and hit. Uh -huh. That's not very penetrating. The walking step, okay, I'm going to move in. You see this here? All right? All right. So basically by taking two to five feet inside the baseline, I've taken away a tenth of a second from my opponent and that's going to translate uh -huh. into a lot more space for them to cover within a lot less time. Okay. And, yep. and just like you've already said this, but we'll be very clear, it's the same stance. It's the open stance. You're just, instead of the open stance as you would traditionally think about it like this, you've stepped in now and you're moving Correct. forward into the court. Exactly. And you make sure that you take a natural stride, mm -hmm. okay, because a lot of people lock themselves up, hit, and then stay right here when in fact that's only half the power. Mm -hmm. Okay, the second portion of the power is when your other foot transfers okay. away forward. So it's okay. here and then there Correct. like that. Exactly. Okay. That second step is really important because you have a lot of momentum coming from the back to the front. So it actually is going to add a little bit of power to your swing simply by moving forward. You don't have to swing harder, but the forward momentum gives you a little bit more pace. You got it. It's a matter of fact, it's a lot more powerful. There's a difference between speed and weight, mm -hmm. okay? A lot of people that use their arm only, they put a lot of speed in their shot, okay? But when you can actually add your entire weight, all right, into the ball, your ball is really brutal to mm -hmm. control. Like someone like Nadal, for instance, puts a lot of weight into his ball. That's why those guys have a hard time, you know, controlling so heavy, it. Yeah. It's so heavy, it's not just the velocity, the pure velocity, it's a lot of that weight. You know, he puts all the 200 pounds that he's worth into the ball every single time, okay? and intermediate player can certainly benefit from that. And this is also a nice, you know, you hear that piece of advice, kind of get your weight behind the ball, transfer your weight forward. Well, if you're using an older school stance, I guess with the neutral, then that's fine because your weight's moving forward. Correct. But if you're now trying to get that modern stance, the open stance, by using that walking step, you're still transferring your weight you're forward. You're still transferring your entire weight forward, uh -huh. exactly, which is exactly what you want to do so that you don't rely on your arm only. Mm -hmm. You know, your arm is the most unreliable piece of equipment you own. Your legs are the strongest muscle, so you want to make sure that you use your legs rather than your arm to, you know, benefit you mm -hmm. for the longer term, you know, because a match is probably going to last an hour and a half to two hours. If you use your arm only, you're going to get tired quickly. Sure, it feels great in the first set, and then midway Correct. through the second, it starts to get a little tight and exactly. a little tired. Exactly. And you start to spray tennis balls. You got it. All right. Excellent. So what's the, uh, what's the next step we've got? The next step, to me, there's a difference between static steps and dynamic okay. steps. Okay. The static steps are the more conventional steps that you refer to, like the close stance. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you feed me a ball to the forehand, this is a close stance. And if you noticed, 
I'm stopped, okay? I don't uh -huh. move much. That's when you have time. It's great to load your power and hit really hard, but when you don't have time and you need to replace very quickly, you need to use dynamic steps. Okay. The um, walking step is a dynamic step because it allows you to move in and then come back quickly. The next one is the hopping step, which is for people that don't have the flexibility to load their upper body one way while they have their legs going another way. So they can do the hopping step where you stay sideways, like a conventional way to hit, okay. which is a neutral stance, and then you just hop through your shot, okay? So I'm gonna go in a close stance and then hop. Okay. So what you see, it gives me exactly the same amount of penetration, okay? That level of dynamism, you know, okay. into my shot without having to be locked and without having to be so flexible. Okay, and okay? just for a point of clarification, you call, we, we refer to that as the neutral stance where, okay, where, neutral the, where stance. the feet are like that. Right. Closed stance is obviously another way people, uh -huh. coaches refer to that. Just want to clarify for our audience because that, you know, when we say neutral, you're referring to a closed stance. So. Exactly. So I think for the viewers, it'd be nice to see the difference between the walking step and okay. the hopping step. So I'm going to have okay. two balls fed to me. The first one is going to be the walking step. All right. All right. This mm -hmm. way. The second one is going to be the hopping step. All right. All right. So both of them, you see, give me about five to 10 feet of penetration inside the court. I take the ball early, take time away, take space away. My opponent is on the run on the other side. Okay. All right, so let me demo it for a second. The first thing I'm gonna do is hit out of the neutral stance. Go ahead, Rob. And that's just where, obviously here's the neutral stance stationary, and now I'll do the hopping step. And so. That's it. And exactly. that's it. And, and so the first one I did, when I'm just, when I'm like this, this would be classified as static. And then the second Correct. one is, is dynamic. dynamic. So let's talk a little bit more about the difference between the two and why this is preferable to the static neutral stance. As we, exactly, as we mentioned earlier, the difference is always time and space. Okay. And when you deal with time and space, you deal with options. So for someone who is playing, uh, you know, let's say at 20 miles per hour, which mm -hmm. is the most average rally for intermediate players, you have a lot of time, mm -hmm. okay? So you have time to see the ball come to you, you have time to pause, take your stance, and hit. Well, unfortunately, as you get better, unfortunately or fortunately, as you get better, the game goes faster, mm -hmm. which means you have a lot less time to get ready, and you have to take the ball on the rise. So basically, before it bounces too high for mm -hmm. you to be uncomfortable. So what the dynamic stances do is they allow you to move into the ball okay. and hit while you move so that you stay fluid. You don't have to stop and break the momentum of your mm -hmm. shot. You just keep moving and deliver your shot beautifully. Okay. okay. And they, do they give you a little bit more time to recover as well? They give you plenty of time to go from one shot to the next. Okay. That's what they're designed for, basically. It's to go quickly to the ball and then be on the proper foot to push back and come back. Okay, and actually okay. quicker than sort of the more old school Correct. static. Exactly, because the use. static stance basically stops your hips. Okay, so if he feeds me a ball again, what you'll see is here, my hips are locked. Okay, mm -hmm. so if my opponent plays a ball to that side, I can't turn. Okay, you gotta you transfer I mean? your weight out Correct. and then you gotta move exactly. back. Exactly, I All have right. to bring this leg back out and then run this way. As in with a walking step, I can actually take my step in any direction. So he's gonna feed me a ball, what you'll see is I'll go like this, and I can actually take my walking step this way if I'm you know, mm -hmm. aware that he's gonna play next over there. Or I can take my walking step in virtually any direction that I want, okay? So I can go this way and go in that direction. Okay. So you would see which direction my left foot is going into will tell you where I'm going next. So it's more okay. efficient. Those couple, the, the fewer steps you have to take to recover or move in a direction. Correct is going to put you in your in position quicker and it's going to cut down on your opponent's time as well. You got it. All exactly right. the best way to describe it. All right, so let's move on to the next piece of footwork you were saying is called the cross step. Correct. The cross step is to me again one of the most important um, you know, step in tennis because it allows you to move efficiently from side to side. In tennis we move in and out if you're aggressive and if you really mean business. From side to side is mostly what's being used by intermediate players and you know recreational players okay. basically. But again, within that cross step from side to side, you can gain a lot of time. The average player usually runs directly to the ball and ends up taking four or five steps for a ball that's just right here. Okay? Mm -hmm. When in fact, if you move with a cross step, that same ball is only a step away. Okay? You just go one cross step and then you're right okay. here, one cross step and you're back. So it's more efficient. It's more efficient. Mm -hmm. Imagine what that does to you if you run one step when my opponent runs four or five steps. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's running a marathon when I'm just taking a nice stroll in the park. Okay, and then by the time we reach the second set, third set, he's tired and I'm not. 
And the, this, the other thing we were talking about off camera, we'll talk about it right now, mm -hmm. is that this gives you a little bit more space and it gives you some margin for error. Correct. And I guess the, the normal club player, if my contact point is right here, what I think is gonna be my contact point. Exactly. I'm gonna move straight here and set up. Correct. But if I get a bad bounce now, then I'm in bad shape. Then you're jammed. So talk to us about how this step actually gives you some margin for error and allows you to adjust to a bad bounce or maybe a ball you didn't quite expect. Well, the beautiful thing about the cross step is because it's a step that goes behind your leg, you can take it straight or you can actually take it deeper. So if it feeds me a ball and the ball is short, I can take a cross step inside. If it feeds the ball really deep, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a cross step behind and I basically end up creating a lot of space for myself to execute my shot with a lot of comfort. So it gives you some time to evaluate and it gives you that margin for error. Correct. So I'm right here and I can stay at this depth or I can then step in if it's a little bit short. Exactly. Or if it's deep, I can Take move one back, back. All right. and then do the same thing. All right. So again, in a very efficient manner, you can either move forward or move back. Okay, okay, so that extra space just gives you a little bit more to work with. Exactly. And, uh, you know, you can, like we said before, adjust for those kind of weird bounces. Exactly, and it's always time and space. Basically, those are the two most important concepts. Are you moving efficiently so that you buy time for yourself? And are you moving efficiently so you take time away from that person? If you take time away, you have more time to see the ball, you have more time to pick your space. Then you put the ball to the left, you easily put the ball to the right, mm -hmm. the other person is running a lot and you're not. And you're in control. Correct. All right. Well, with that in mind, let's move on to uh, the next piece of footwork we've got. The next piece of footwork is what I call the pivot step, okay? Mm -hmm. Obviously, in the course of a match, you're going to find yourself running around also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ideally, we would want to be in control all the time, but that's not sure. always the case. Okay. So the pivot step is another way to quickly get back to the middle by essentially turning very quickly and being on your running leg. Okay. So I'm going to do it to the forehand side. He's going to feed me a ball really far out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way here and then turn. And if you notice, my leg is on this side, so I'm automatically running back to the mm -hmm. middle. Nadal uses that one quite a bit. Okay. So that's why you see him going out of the court uh -huh. and pivoting with a full rotation and his body is already facing to sprint in the other direction. Okay, could you demo it for us a couple more sure. times just so we okay. can see the exact All right. work there? So I'm gonna run quickly and then I'm gonna pivot and if you notice, my leg is loaded, I'm ready to go to the it's, other it's side. It's almost like you're in a sprinter stance where you're Correct. just ready to exactly. explode back to the middle. You have the no time, but you still mean business and you can still hit a shot very efficiently and get back quickly so that you don't lose that time. So this is more, the other stuff we've been focusing on is getting to the tennis ball. And this Correct. is more about recovery. Exactly. And getting yourself back quick so that you're not in terrible court position exactly. when your opponent hits the ball. That's a very good concept that you bring up because if you think about time, all right, when, do you, when can you actually earn time? All right, if I run to the ball, I'm not really in control because my opponent defines that. But where I can actually take time away is in my replacement. Okay, so you'll see players actually sprint to run to the shot, they hit a lob, and then you see them walk. Mm -hmm. Well, if you, took, if you took you one second to get there, it probably t it should take you a half a second to get back and yeah. still be in the point. Because if you spend a second and a half to one side, that's a second and a half your opponent has to put the ball to the other side. So it's very important to always, again, manage your time and space. All right, great. So another piece of um, you know important information here is to learn how to move in towards the net and stay sideways okay and that's mostly good for backhands because on the forehand side if you're righty in your case you're lefty yeah. so you know on the left side or right side wouldn't apply but on the forehand side I can just naturally be flexible and adjust. And on you can the use that walking step. Correct you can use the walking step. On the backhand side we're not as flexible because you have to go across your body uh -huh. and then you have to keep your hips sideways. So one step that I use when I get a backhand that's inside and I need to stay sideways to play down the line is the inside step. Okay, and the inside step basically looks like this. I'm going to take a step inside so that by the time I load, my hips are still facing sideways. Okay. So in real live action, this looks like this. Okay, I'm going to go here and there. Okay, and you so notice my hips stayed sideways and I was able to play As you're preparing, down you're the moving line. forward but you're sideways so Correct. you can use proper technique. Correct. And just to be very, I guess, vivid, specific, it's the left foot that comes back to hold. To hold the stance yeah. sideways. Okay. Think about golf, all right? The difference of, you know, the difference in your stance affect your shot. So if I want to play to that side 
my hips will basically be aligned with the axis that my ball is going to take. If I'm going to play this way, my hips are facing this way. If I'm going to play that way, my hips now are facing this way. Okay, so when you take a backhand side down the line, you also need to make sure that your hips are basically turned in the stay direction. Stay in line. Stay in line with the shot that you're taking. Okay? When you move in and you take the ball very early, there's a difference because now you also need to be a little more dynamic and there is one step that's called the karaoke step that looks like an inside step, but the difference is one, you hit at the same time as you take the All step, right. and the other one, you actually take the step first and then, and then hit All right, second. And then you hit, okay. Correct. So I'm gonna demonstrate the karaoke step. The karaoke step, you go this way. You All notice right. I move in and I slice and stay sideways at the same time. The inside step, I'm gonna take the step first. Okay, I take the step first and then, then I hit. hit. All right. That's the difference between the two. All right, so the, so the karaoke step allows you to transition forward a little Correct. bit more. Exactly, when you're that step forward. is excellent for people who like to chip and charge, okay, move in and rush the net. Basically, you'd mm -hmm. see players like the Edberg, sort of the old, you know, McEnroe. McEnroe, you know, the old uh, guard, you know. Now, since they don't go to the net as much, or when they go to the net, it's often explosive shot, yeah. they make a winner anyways. You wouldn't necessarily see that. But for players at the intermediate level and even the beginner level who need a little more time to rush the net, it's actually an excellent step to, again, take time away and be really, really diligent about keeping their stance on well, the this, control. Yeah, this would be a great shot for, for the rec player who's playing a lot of doubles, right? Exactly. Beautiful shot. You control your position, you control your ball, you get in comfortably. Good. Well, Will, we're going to use uh, some of my students you know, to showcase a little bit of the modern footwork we just talked about. Um, right now, I'm just going to feed them a few balls and you know, let them go with their own natural way to hit. All right. Okay? All right, three, four hands moving across. Okay? All right, what you notice here is this gentleman has a tendency to use an open stance. Mm -hmm. You see that? That's very good. All right, beautiful player, very nice footwork. This one uses also a little more penetrating, if you notice. Yeah. That's a little more like an, um, a walking step. Uh -huh. okay? Kind of in very between. Good. Exactly. This one is a more conventional stance. You see, that's the neutral. But uh -huh. she pivots around, so she's able to basically bring her foot All around. Right. Very powerful player. Again, that rotation is more like a pivot. It's like a pivot step, but she does it in a very neutral way right. and is able to generate a lot of power. This little one is lefty, and same thing. You notice that she's using a walking step, uh -huh. okay? Penetrating and moving the into the ball. Side. Exactly, on the backhand side, taking time away, all right? A lot of the younger players, what you'll notice is they learn dynamic footwork uh -huh. right away because that's they, their generation. Basically. Exactly, they didn't grow up with the more traditional you footwork. You got it, they didn't grow up with the wooden rackets and they didn't grow up with, you know, gut strings yeah. and all that stuff. They're all very, very penetrating. This one is using more of a hopping step. It's kind of a static hopping step, but you notice that she's airborne, basically, now, she, when yeah, she hits. Yeah. Very good. And now, she, was she a lefty or was she just playing two hands She's actually ambidextrous. Sides? She plays both hands on both sides. Oh, that's and, not uh, fair. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, that's good, but she also has to compensate with the reach, like uh -huh. the Santoros yeah. and those guys. You know, they have to run a Gamble. lot more. Again, for her, it's extremely important to move very quickly because she has to reach for the a ball. A little bit, yeah, more exactly. limitation on the reach. This one is a very powerful player. See, that's very yeah. conventional also, okay? All right, but you notice she's able through that rotation to hit the ball with a lot yeah. of power. I was gonna say, a lot of pace, nice, easy exactly. swing. That's her sister, a little more penetrating in terms of the body position. You notice that she penetrates the court with her body by yeah. leaning forward and has a slight pivot. You guys are gonna do the walking step now, okay? All right, and what you should notice with the walking step is again, that element of penetration. You notice yeah. how they cut that baseline plane. You see that? Boom, that's excellent for penetration. Like this one Steps. is gonna penetrate a little more. You guys need to move in just a tad more. That's it. Okay, they move back, they create space. Yeah, they move and in. then they stepped in. Exactly. That's very clear on very that Very nice, one. all right. There it is, you see, same thing. All right, she's gonna penetrate and then move in. All right, she's gonna penetrate and then move in. That was, yeah. All right, this one. What you'll notice again, these, these kids are younger. Yeah, there's a so good walking that's step. That's exactly a walking step, exactly, yep. that's it. All right, this one, same thing. That's kind of an open, more walking, okay? That's there we it, go. you notice, mm -hmm. okay? Sometimes they get a little confused, which is probably gonna happen with your viewers as well, is they get confused between the open stance and the walking step, mm -hmm. okay? They have the tendency to take sort of a, an open stance with a step that follows, when in fact the walking step is more like a stride. You know, it's your regular stride, you just move in basically. Okay. There it is, okay? Try to move in a little more. 
Yeah, and, okay. and what I tell me, correct me if I'm wrong, but what viewers should look for at home is are they stepping laterally, that'd be open, or are they stepping forward exactly. towards us? They're crossing the baseline, stepping correct. into the court. Correct. That's the difference between the two. The open stance is more lateral, the walking step is more forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys are going to do the hopping step now. Okay, this one they should be very, very comfortable with. And what you'll notice is they'll just right away penetrate, take the ball early, yep. okay? And then you see it's really explosive. Yeah. Without having to have the flexibility, okay, uh -huh. that a lot of players don't have, which is fine. Yeah. My thing in tennis is, you know, there's yeah, always nice. a way to do it well, yeah. okay? Like you see, same thing. He's very explosive, he goes airborne, yeah. and he can generate just a lot of power. What I like about these uh, players is they're very, very flexible, uh -huh. okay? Very good. Again, come on. All right. And I'm actually very proud to say nice. that none of them have actually gotten injured in two years. Really? Okay, which is really hard to do with sure. junior players because, you know, they're growing, their growth plates are closing, and you have to be very careful, okay, when you're dealing with uh, young athletes or when you're dealing with adults as well, you know, people that are not super trained, you know, that need a little bit of, uh, you know, relaxation when they play without hurting themselves. Yeah, you know? and the juniors too, they, you know, at least when I was a junior, it's hard to have that off switch. You kind of go, go, go. And you got it. If you're a little bit older, maybe you understand your body a little bit more and you slow things you down. You got it, exactly. So I, I, I really like to work with them on flexibility, on an efficiency. Same thing, walking step, okay? All right, take your time, walking so step. Back to the walking, yep, there's the okay, penetration you were it. talking about. that's it, walking step. That's it. All right, you're going to do a hopping step. All right, and then you see the difference. So now we're alternating. Correct. We're going to alternate so that you can see the difference between the two. There you go. All right, this one is also going to do a walking step as well. Okay. All right, walking. You see how she penetrates the yeah. court? Okay. All right, and then she penetrates the court. Okay. This time I think it's very important to actually show the. Um, um, the pivot step. So they're going to run to the shot, take a pivot step and replace. And then recover. And recover. Right. What you really want to pay attention to on the pivot step is how quickly they get back to the middle. Okay. okay. Um, now that we've done the walking step and the pivot step, I want to show you or now how... Now we've done the walking step and the uh, hop step. Sorry. Yeah. Now that we've done the walking step and the hopping step, we're going to do, do the pivot step, which to me is the best way to show how quickly you can recover from your shot. Okay. So you're going to do a pivot step and quickly come back to the middle, okay? So what you'll notice, she goes quickly and then pivots and you see how quickly she's, she's back. back? Yep. Exactly. Next. All right. So that's what's important to, to see is mm -hmm. how fluid she is and how balanced she is recovering towards the middle, okay? This one is going to do the same. And then you see how quickly she comes yep. back? And Very it allows good. you, it, 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 the, the, the pivot step, it looks like it allows you, right after you hit, you can just transition into that footwork real easily, real quickly. You got it. And the beautiful thing about that is because you're not really committing your weight on any one of those two legs. So if someone tries to play behind you, you can still get there. And you can right. get there by using a cross step. Okay? So it prevents you, to a degree, to, from being wrong-footed. Correct. When your opponent hits behind exactly. you. Exactly. All right. So what you'll see is you'll see, there you go, pivot step. Yep. You see how quickly they get back? Uh -huh. Very good. All right. And they look very important. They look very balanced with this they piece of They look very footwork. balanced, exactly. What you'll notice is the upper body never drops, uh -huh. okay, which is one mistake that a lot of people do is when they're stretched out, what you'll see is what I call the tilt. Okay, their head starts to tilt to the side. And once your head tilts to the side, you're off balance. Mm -hmm. You can't play. Ready? Come on. Okay. All right. Right there. Same thing. Yeah. You see how quickly she gets very, yeah. back? Very good. All right. Now I think I'm going to use... Um, uh, one of my a player who actually has a beautiful slice back and he's going to work on the karaoke step All right. and move inside. Okay, Robert, you're going to go next. Okay, you're actually going to start from that corner over there. All right, so that they can get a good shot at you. And what I want is I want you to move in with a slice and then you're going to take a karaoke step. Okay. All right, here we go. Come on. There's a karaoke mm -hmm. step. Very good. Do it again. You want to move that ball? All right, here we go. And what you'll notice is, you know, how clean that looks. That's yep. it. Nice. Okay. And he moves in, beautiful delivery. He controls his hip turn beautifully, and then he hits perfect. 
Okay. Lily, you got to do an inside step. All right, you're going to take a, an inside step and take a back end. You ready? All right, inside step. Okay, it's going to be forward. So you're going to take an inside step with your left foot going behind your right foot. There we go. There it is. Nice. All right, so you see the difference between the karaoke yep. step and the inside step. The timing step. is slightly different. Exactly. That, you're going to do step. it again. All right, and I'm going to have both you and Robert. Robert, you're going to be on this side. Lily, you're going to be on that side. Robert, you're going to do the karaoke step. Lily is going to do the inside step so that the viewers can actually see the difference. Okay, karaoke step. There we go. You see, he slices and he takes that inside okay. step at the same time. In her case, she's going to take an inside step and then hit yep. after she's it's, taken she the She steps step. behind slightly before she Exactly. Hits. So we're going to do a couple so that the viewers same see time. the difference. Very good. And then here, you see, uh -huh. one has a pause, one hits at the same time. So he goes through the shot. Beautiful, okay? And in her case, she's gonna take a step and pause, and mm -hmm. then hit. That's the difference between the uh -huh. two, okay? They're equally as lethal, but one is to come to the net, and the other one is to basically stay back with a lot of power behind it. It allows you to move in and step into the ball, but then you're not following it to net. Like you said, you're gonna be maintaining a baseline rally. Exactly. One point that needs to be made is that all the steps that we discussed don't only just apply, to the baseline. They actually apply to the net as well. So That's when you start to, correct, when you start to move forward, you are using walking steps and hopping steps as well to take your volleys. And then we're gonna have them move in, taking a ground stroke from the back and then coming and taking a volley as well. So you'll okay. see that that step applies to the baseline and applies to the net as well. See that? Yep. That's beautiful. Cross step, okay? And there. Uh -huh. See how quickly she gets to the ball? Come on. All right, he's gonna do a cross step. That's it, boom. Okay, and then a cross step, all right, and boom. Uh -huh. What was beautiful about him on the forehand side is that he did a cross step followed by a walking step. I was going to say, I wanted to point that out. Exactly. So he's, he's kind of merging and mixing the footwork based on what he's trying to do. Exactly, and what's going to happen to the viewers is as they start to get very, very comfortable, they'll notice that their hips and their legs are just moving really fluidly. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, okay? All right, you're going to do a cross step also. There you go, cross step. And then walking step. Uh -huh. You notice that cross step, and then walking step uh, on both. as well yeah. on both sides. Okay, but again, it looks very fluid, so she, very beautiful. And she's giving herself that space in case she gets the bad bounce, and then when she doesn't, she says, "Okay, now I'm going to cut off time." Exactly, step in. exactly. All right, she's going to do a cross step, and then a pivot step. We go a cross step, and then load it. Very good. This one is <laughs> the two-hander on both on sides. Both sides. She's quite. There you go. Cross step, and then a hopping step followed by a cross step, and then so a hopping step. It looks like step. she crossed in front there. She brought Very the, good. the right leg in front of her exactly. left leg. Just a bit, cross step, okay? And you know, sometimes you don't have to do a full yeah. cross step. You can actually just do a couple of little tiny steps, you know, if mm -hmm. the ball is too close to you. And that's something Federer does. He kind of exactly. almost shuffles exactly. occasionally. You it know, looks... sometimes that's all you need. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you just need a shuffle. You know, you just have the flexibility to make it a cross step to take a longer stride while still staying sideways, uh -huh. or taking a little shuffle step if the boy is right next to you. Yeah, Federer almost looks like he's kind of taking two split steps. Exactly. He'll split and then kind of split in one direction again, it looks like. Exactly. But it's the same concept as the, as the footwork we're working as the on right now. That we're working on. You guys now are going to move in, okay? You're going to take a walking step or a hopping step and then take a volley and take a walking step at the net as well. So this time we're working on moving into the court and coming to the net. Okay, so you're gonna do a walking step, that's it, and then here a walking step, that's it. Very good. So you noticed again that it uh -huh. applies at the baseline yeah. and the, at the net. The in your case, court. you're gonna do a karaoke step, slice, and then you come in and then you're gonna do a karaoke step volley as well. Okay, so you'll see karaoke step there, uh -huh. very good, and he comes in, karaoke step for the volley. Nice. Okay, so that's beautiful. In your case, you do whatever you want, okay? You keep us interested here. There we go. <laughs> All right, that's a hopping step. Uh -huh. She gets here, followed by a walking step, okay? Mm -hmm. So you notice it looks fluid, okay? They don't look like they're hurting themselves. Everything is in the, way, in, in the place where it's, it needs to be, and they just look beautiful while they're doing it. Her, she likes to hop. Very good. Uh -huh. She gets here, and then walking step as well. So, and, and it's worth pointing out for the viewers, this I feel like when we're bringing people to net, 
really demonstrates how the footwork is dynamic versus static, where exactly. you're moving, you're, you're continually moving forward, but you're balanced, your technique is proper, everything exactly. you need to play high-level tennis. Exactly. It's facilitated One thing by the footwork. All need to add here is a little bit of a split step. So, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to add a little split steps in the in the mix. Okay, let's keep the good habits going. Split. There you go. You move in. There's a walking uh -huh. step. Split. There you go. There's a walking mm -hmm. step. Okay. All right. She's going to split. That's it. Okay. Walking step. Uh -huh. She's going to come in. She's going to split, and walking step. Very good. Now I want a hopping step. Okay. Split, you're going to give me a hopping step. Very good. You're going to split, and then you're going to give me a walking step. Very good. Again, split. All right. You're going to give me a hopping step. Very good. Split, and then a walking step. Uh -huh. Very good. Need not to say more. That's, That's beautifully good. done. I was going to say, like, I mean, I'm, I'm repeating myself right now, but it's really clear how there's just that smooth, balanced transition forward. Look, you, you know, the players look in control the whole time. Exactly. They're moving up. Exactly, and I think what's very important to say to the viewers is that if these kids can do it, they can certainly all do it. That there is no, absolutely no restriction on what you can do out there. You know, anyone can do this. You just have to be fluid and give it a shot. And again, this is, I mean, this is pro level footwork. This is not, you know, footwork. club level and then Federer and Roth and everybody else doing something different. This is exactly, exactly what these guys are doing. This is the way that people should move, no matter whether you are a beginner or a pro player. If you move this way, you're going to have a great time playing tennis. And you're going to have a long career. And you're going to have a long career. Have fun with it and improve very, very fast.